and this is where I left you, right? With that result, that is AF upon HC is equal to A upon EC. Now, how do you proceed further? Now, what you will say is there are two ratios which are equal. So, you cross multiply. That is AF into EC is equal to A into FC. But if you cross multiply, it is not going to simplify. You will not get anything further. That means now, that is not going to help. So, let us think, how are you going to simplify these ratios? Let us understand this. I will give you some hint. Observe. Now, look at AF in the numerator of the first ratio and denominator. Look at that in the figure. Now, AF and FC together gives you what? AF plus FC is nothing but it is equal to AC. So, this is one result I want you to remember. Okay. Now, look at the right hand side ratio. A and EC. If you look at this two, A and EC together gives you what? AC. Beautiful. This is the next result which I want you to remember. Right. These are the two things which we have. Now, observe carefully. That means we are saying we are talking about A plus EC and AF plus FC. You know what? If we do this, we get AC in the numerators of both the ratio and the ratio will be simplified if we get this. That means somehow we need to get this. Right? You remember what we had done earlier? We had learned long back. If A upon B is equal to C upon D, then if that means if two ratios are equal, then A plus B upon B is equal to C plus D upon D, which is nothing but by componendo. This can be applied when two ratios are equal to simplify a ratio. Now, is that what we require here? Observe, because we are talking about AF plus FC. That means if we want AF plus FC, that is a numerator plus a denominator, that means we need to do componendo. So, let us apply componendo. So, we will get AF plus FC upon FC is equal to, same here, that is equal to AE plus EC upon EC, right? And the reason we know is nothing but by componendo. Now observe, what is AF plus FC? We know it is AC. What is A plus EC? We know it is AC. And we got that here, right? Now this is what we have. So now what happens? Now can we simplify this ratio? Yes, because the numerators will get cancelled and we will have 1 upon FC is equal to 1 upon EC. Now when we cross multiply, what we will get is, we will get FC is equal to EC. So what has happened is those ratios are simplified and now we end up getting FC is equal to EC. Now let us understand what can we conclude and what can we gather from this. It is very important. Observe very carefully. If you look at this FC and EC which are equal, observe there is a common letter there that is C. right? So observe C in the figure. That is we are talking about the point C which we have. right? Now when I say FC, what do I mean by that when I say FC? What does this mean? It means it is the distance of F from that point C. Same way, when you talk about EC, what do you mean by that? It is nothing but it is distance of E from C. And here, what we have got is distance of F from C and distance of E from C are equal. This is what we have obtained now. Right? This is the result what we have got. We are going to think over it. So, what we said is distance of F from C and distance from E from C are equal. Now, to understand this better, let us take an example. I am saying there is a line L and there is a point C on that line. And what I want you to do is plot two points E and F on this line at a distance of 5 centimeter above point C, right? Not below, above point C. So I want two points E and F at a distance of 5 centimeter from C. Let us plot one point first. So we take a scale from C, 5 centimeter, we get a point, and that point, first point, we took it as E. We want one more point from C at a distance of 5 centimeter. We plot that and again we get that point to be F. Now, after doing this, what did you observe? Think carefully. What did you observe? Yes, F and E are the same point. They are not two distinct points. That means from FC is equal to EC, we can conclude that F and E are not two different points. They are one and the same. Beautiful. Now, understand that means line DF and line D will not be two different lines. They will be the same line. That means they will coincide like this. And if they coincide, that means now we can say that line DE is parallel to side BC. And that is what we were supposed to prove in the sum. Wasn't that easy? A very important theorem.